Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. I am so excited about today's video because this is my annual all mineral sunscreen testing video. I put up this video every year in May in honor of Skin Cancer Awareness Month. As you know, skin cancer is a deadly disease. The sun's rays also cause 80 to 90% of our skin's aging. And so using sunscreen is a great effective tool to fight both skin cancer and premature signs of photo aging. This is my eighth annual all mineral sunscreen testing video. I've tested over 120 different sunscreens. This year I'm adding another 18 into the mix. And let me tell you, mineral sunscreens are not easy to formulate to make a beautiful sunscreen that sits great on the skin, doesn't give you a white cast, doesn't feel greasy, doesn't look super shiny. And so of the 18 that I've tested for you, I'd say maybe four or five are things that I would actually wear, but I'm gonna show you all of them. All the sunscreens that I'm testing in today's video will be listed in the info box below the video, along with links to purchase some of my favorites. And I've also done a running list of all the sunscreens I've ever tested that is over on my blog. So I'll put the link to that in the info box below the video as well. So to do the testing, I like to level the playing field by putting on one quarter teaspoon of each sunscreen. This is how much you're supposed to use to cover your face and your neck to get the SPF on the label. Just to compare the difference between a quarter of a teaspoon and what most people use for sunscreen, this is what most people use for sunscreen for their face on a daily basis. It's about a pea size amount, maybe the amount that you would use for foundation. This is what you actually need to apply to your face. This is a full quarter teaspoon of sunscreen. If a quarter teaspoon of this gives you an SPF 50, what do you think you're getting with this? Maybe an SPF of seven? I don't think that the reason you're using an SPF 50 is so that you can get an SPF of seven. So just keep that in mind when you're applying your sunscreen, it is dose dependent. If you had a headache and you needed to take two aspirin to get rid of it, would you take an eighth of one aspirin or a 16th of the dose to get rid of your headache and still expect it to be effective? you wouldn't. So make sure that you use the correct amount of sunscreen. I have combo skin. I am mainly normal with a slightly oily T-zone. So of course, things that I love, you may hate. Things that I hate, you may love. Everyone's skin is different. For the testing, I use the same foundation for every single sunscreen. So that's another way of leveling the playing field. So I'm comparing apples to apples. This is a foundation that I've tested before. It doesn't settle into my wrinkles and it wears on its own for eight to 10 hours. Let's get into the sunscreen. I'm going to review them in this video from worst to best. So starting in with the worst, it is Cetaphil Sheer Mineral Face SPF 50. This one retails for $15 for 1.7 ounces. This is a lightweight liquid that feels really greasy and leaves a strong white cast. It doesn't blend well. It gives you polka dot pores and settles into your wrinkles. Second worst sunscreen this year was from one of my favorite sunscreens brands and that is Banana Boat. It's their Sensitive Mineral Faces SPF 50 Plus. This retails for $9 for three ounces. This is a white cream that's very difficult to rub in. It leaves a strong white cast that doesn't fade away after 20 minutes of dry back. I do use the Banana Boat Light as Air chemical sunscreen for everything from my neck down, and that is my favorite sunscreens. If you're looking for a great body sunscreen, definitely give that one a try. Another sunscreen that left me looking very ghostly was La Roche-Posay Mineral Face and Body SPF 50. This retails for $25 for three ounces. This is a very thick white cream, much like diaper paste. Not shockingly, it goes on white, it doesn't blend well, and it leaves a strong white cast. It actually didn't feel too greasy or look super shiny after 20 minutes. All right, our next category of unwearable sunscreens are ones that are too greasy feeling and are too shiny. Now you may love a super luminous sunscreen, but I personally don't. I have enlarged pores and some wrinkles and texture because I mean, golly, I'm gonna be 60 in a couple of months. So um, I prefer things that are a little bit less shiny and a little bit less dewy. The uh, worst one in this category was Eucerin Sensitive Mineral SPF 50. This retails for $18 for four ounces. This is a white sunscreen with a thick cream texture. It's difficult to spread the quarter teaspoon around my face and neck. It is very, very greasy feeling gives a very strong white cast. It's very shiny. 
<laughs> it gathered up in my eyebrows and my hairline. It's just not wearable for me. After 20 minutes of dry back, nothing had changed and it still wasn't wearable. Next up is a brand that a lot of people requested after last year's sunscreen testing video. I don't know why, but this got so many requests last year, so I tested it. It is Pipette SPF 50. This retails for $15 for four ounces. This is a thick white lotion that takes a while to rub in. It feels pretty greasy and has a very shiny finish. It leaves a pinkish, purplish white cast. It didn't dry back at all after 20 minutes and was still very shiny, very white, and very greasy looking and feeling. Next up in the greasy shiny category is the Biosance Squalane and Zinc SPF 30. This is a PA++++, which is the UVA rating. Four pluses is the maximum, so three pluses is pretty good. This retails for $42 for 3.38 ounces. This is a white sunscreen with a lightweight lotion texture. It has a pretty greasy feel and a shiny finish. It goes on easily, but it doesn't blend out well, especially around hair. It gets tangled up in your eyebrows and your hairline. After 20 minutes of drying time, it was still very greasy feeling and very shiny, and it does leave a slight white cast. Next up is Kinship SPF 30. This one retails for $26 for 1.75 ounces. This is a pinkish tinted puffy lotion that took forever to rub in. It felt like I was smearing butter on my face. It made my face turn red and left a mottled white cast and a very, very shiny finish. After 20 minutes of dry back, it still looked super shiny and felt greasy. It was not wearable at all for me. And then a new category this year are sunscreens that have overpowering fragrance. They may have been reasonable sunscreens, but I couldn't wear them. I'm very sensitive to fragrance. If you love fragrance and you're not sensitive to fragrance, you may love these sunscreens, but for me, they were unwearable because I could smell my face all day long. And that's something that I just cannot do. It gives me a headache. I can't take it. So the first one in this category is Sukin Sheer Touch SPF 30. This is $19 for 2.03 ounces. This is a tinted, lightweight, whipped cream texture. It does come in two shades. The shade that I have it in is light medium. It's very easy to apply. Right, this is actually a really nice looking sunscreen. It does ball and pill up a little bit with um, skincare, but not too, too much. The color is really good. It's not too shiny. It would be the perfect sunscreen if it wasn't so full of fragrance. I just, ugh, it's so fragrance. If you like things that are fragrance, then you could love this. I can't stand it. I just put it on to work out in and the fragrance was driving me crazy the whole time and I can still smell it. It's very strong. So it's a no-go for me, but could be a really good one for some other people. Here's another one that I liked a lot, but because of the overpowering fragrance, I really just never reach for it. So this one is the ISDIN Photo Ultra Light Emulsion. This is an SPF 50, retails for $60 for 3.4 ounces. This is a very runny tinted liquid with a very strong perfumey fragrance. It spreads and blends easily over the skin. In. The tint is a good match for me, but it won't work for lighter people. It didn't have any problems around my eyebrows or my hairline. It felt dry and set right away. It does contain a lot of SD alcohol, which can be drying for some people. The finish is natural looking. It is very, very wearable on its own. It looked a little dry and clingy on my forehead though. Under makeup, it looked really nice because it was so sheer and light. It didn't change the finish of the foundation and it didn't cause any settling into wrinkles. At the four hour check-in, the foundation was worn off on my forehead because I wore a baseball hat while I was outside and my nose was looking a little pink. At the eight hour check-in, I thought the makeup looked good and considering that I had worn a baseball hat and a mask for a couple hours that day, it was only showing wear in those areas and everywhere else it looked good. So this one was a real fave of mine the day I tested it. Unfortunately, I have not reached for it since then just because of the fragrance. All right, our next category is sunscreens that are wearable on their own, but they didn't work very well under makeup. So first in this category is Hero Force Shield SPF 50. This retails for $20 for 1.69 ounces. This sunscreen is formulated for acne prone skin. It has a mint green tint, 
coming out of the tube to help reduce redness. It is a creamy lotion texture. It's not a great blender. It does get tangled up in the hair and it does ball and pill with my skincare at least. It takes work and attention to rub it in and make sure that you don't have any of that green tint left anywhere on your skin. The green tint goes to a whitish greenish cast on the skin, which I didn't love the look of. I'm not so red that it really helped me that much. It's not too greasy feeling though and not too shiny. After 20 minutes of dry down, the white cast was mostly diminished. This one could be wearable on its own for people with slightly paler skin tone than me. The makeup went over it nicely and it looked good to start, but it settled really badly into my neck wrinkles. <laughs> It made the makeup look shiny and sweaty after a couple of hours, and I wasn't happy with how it wore with makeup. Next up is Skin Medica Essential Defense Tinted SPF 32. This is a PA++++. This retails for $40 for 1.85 ounces. This is a tinted lotion sunscreen with a pump dispenser. It feels slightly silicone-y. The tint is a good match for my skin tone. There were no problems rubbing it in around hair or eyebrows. The finish is luminous. This one was slightly shinier than I would like, but it could be wearable on its own if you prefer more of a dewy finish. And it doesn't feel greasy or sticky or heavy. With makeup, it looked really, really nice. It didn't change the finish of the foundation and didn't cause any settling into the wrinkles. During the time that I wore this, I found it to be so drying feeling. Okay, 10 hours in this sunscreen, really don't like it, didn't wear well. Makeup is all kind of smudged around and blotchy and skin feels super dry and yucky. So, fail on the sunscreen. Next up is Dermatology Physical Tinted Moisturizer SPF 44. This retails for $28 for 2.1 ounces. It comes in one shade. It's a tinted lotion with a whipped texture. It rubs in okay. It's a little streaky and gathers up in the eyebrows and at the hairline though. It feels greasy and has a shiny finish. The tint is a good match for my skin tone. The makeup goes on over it very nicely, but the shine does come through the makeup. I added setting powder to tone down the shine. And the makeup wore well at the four hour check-in. At the eight hour check-in, I thought the shine was continuing to come through and making me look greasy and it was sliding around and not looking pretty. So while this one may be wearable for some people who like something that's super moisturizing and a little bit more dewy looking, it didn't perform great under makeup. All right, the next group are going to be the five best sunscreens that I tested this year. So this group I call the wearable on their own and also good under makeup sunscreens. So first in this group, is actually two sunscreens from the same company. It is the Aven Solar UV SPF 50 Plus. They make a non-tinted version of this and a tinted version of this. They're both $32 for 1.7 ounces. They both contain 12% zinc oxide. They're both water resistant to 40 minutes and they're both fragrance free. Let's talk about the non-tinted one to start. This is a runny white liquid. It blends with a little bit of effort. There is a tiny bit of pilling with my skincare around my hairline. It was pretty greasy feeling when it went on and left a slight white cast and a shiny finish. But after 20 minutes of drying time, it dried and set and it didn't feel greasy and the white cast was slightly diminished. So I put makeup on over this one and my foundation went on really well over the sunscreen and looked really nice. It didn't cause any settling into wrinkles. The makeup wore off slightly quicker with this sunscreen than normal, but it didn't wear off badly or look bad throughout the day from a distance. It didn't feel drying. It didn't get shiny. At the eight hour check-in, I still thought it looked good and mainly in place. I wouldn't wear this one just on its own because of the slight white cast. So then I thought, well, let me try the tinted one. This sunscreen only comes in one shade. And as you can see from the footage, the tint is way too dark for me. But I gotta say that hardly anybody makes a tinted sunscreen 
sunscreen that is darker for darker skin tone people. So this would be a really great one for you. I know this is going to be a little bit controversial to say because some people tell you not to do this, but I have tried these two mixed together to get the right shade for me. And mixing these together, I really like them a lot. So I could get the right shade by mixing a little bit of the one that's too dark with a little bit of the white, bam, I've got a perfect sunscreen. All right, next up is Color Science Flex. This is an SPF 50 with a PA++++ rating. This is $45 for 1.8 ounces. It's 12% zinc oxide and it is water resistant to 40 minutes. This comes in four shades. The shade I have it in is medium. This comes out of the bottle, a white lotion, and it changes colors as you rub it in. This does feel a little greasy going on and it has a very wet and greasy looking shiny finish. It was still pretty shiny looking and pretty greasy to the touch after 20 minutes of dry back. Makeup went on well over it, but it goes on sheerer than normal. The shine does come through the makeup. I had to powder over my T-zone just to keep the shine from accentuating my pores and texture. At the four hour check-in, the makeup still looked good. At the eight hour check-in, it looked okay. It was showing somewhere around my nose and forehead. All right, next up is Naked Sundays SPF 50 Plus Collagen Glow Priming Lotion. This is $29 for 1.7 ounces. It's 22.75% zinc oxide. It's water resistant to 80 minutes and it's fragrance free. This is a slightly tinted, thicker lotion. It has a really nice rub in and the tint is pretty light, making me look a little paler than normal. The finish is a little luminous for me. The feel is a little greasier and stickier and heavier than I like, but after 20 minutes of dry back, this one feels dry, it feels set, and the shine is diminished. This one is very wearable on its own for paler skin tones. Makeup goes on over it really, really beautifully. It had a smoothing effect that minimized pores and texture, but it did cause a little bit of settling into my smile lines. At the four hour check-in, the foundation was hardly worn off at all, but it did accentuate wrinkles a little bit by settling into them. It wasn't as good as I was hoping under makeup, but it was pretty good. All right, next up is a sunscreen. A lot of you are probably familiar with already because I discovered this one back in October and I've been using it, fell in love with it, and was recommending it all year long. So this one is the Dr. G Green Mild Up Sun Plus SPF 50 PA++++. This retails for $22 for 1.7 ounces. It has zinc oxide, not sure the percentage because it's a Korean sunscreen, so they don't have to put the percentage on the label. This is not water resistant and it is fragrance free. This is a runny white liquid sunscreen that rubs in really, really easily. It does leave a slight white cast. It does feel slightly greasy going on and is a little shiny when you first apply it. But after 20 minutes of dry back, I love this sunscreen. The white cast is diminished, although it is still visible. The shine is gone and it doesn't feel greasy. It actually minimizes the look of my pores and texture. I do wear foundation over this one to cover up the white cast, but the foundation goes on beautifully over this sunscreen. It didn't cause any settling into my wrinkles. At the four hour check-in, the makeup still looks good with just a little bit of wear showing on my chin. At the eight hour check-in, the makeup was still mainly in place, but a little worn off on my chin and by my eyebrows. It didn't settle into wrinkles and it felt comfortable to wear all day. The only thing keeping this one from being the winner this year is the slight white cast that it gives me, so I can't really wear this one on its own. I would like to have a perfect sunscreen that I can put it on, and if I decide not to wear makeup, I don't look like a little bit ghostly. And if I decide to wear makeup, it will also look great under makeup. And that's what I have found in this year's winner, which is the Undefined R&R Sun Serum. This is an SPF 50 with a PA++++ rating. It's $28 for 1.7 ounces. This is 12 
percent zinc oxide it's water resistant to 40 minutes and it's fragrance free this is a lightweight runny tinted liquid this one has what i'm calling a lightweight greasy feel it does feel a little bit like oily going on but it's not super heavy it's not tacky and it doesn't feel greasy on my fingers after i put it on it doesn't leave any white cast but the tint is a little bit on the warm side so it's not going to match everybody's skin tone it blends in quickly and easily, even around hair and eyebrows, and it's not overly shiny. Here is the undefined sunscreen after 20 minutes. It feels dry and set. It looks nice. The finish isn't overly shiny or luminous. Very wearable on its own. The makeup goes on really nicely over this sunscreen, although it did cause the tiniest bit of settling into my smile lines. At the four hour check-in, the makeup wore really well and looked just applied. It didn't get shiny and it didn't feel drying throughout the day. At the eight hour check-in, I thought I got amazing wear out of the makeup with this sunscreen. It's lightweight and comfortable to wear all day and makeup looked good all day. So this is the winner this year. I have been wearing this nonstop since I found it a couple of weeks ago. I've worn it with a few other foundations. It works really well with all my different foundations. I have it on today under this foundation and I think it looks terrific. This is the new Chanel that I love so much. I love it that it feels hydrating, that it doesn't feel drying, and that it makes my makeup look really youthful, really natural and skin-like. So that is a real winner. Give that one a try. Of course, if there's something else in here that you thought, oh my gosh, that wasn't perfect for her, but it sounds perfect for me, definitely give that one a try too because it's all about you finding a sunscreen that you will love and wear every single day. Before we go, I just want to address one question that I know a lot of people will ask me because I do test the sunscreens with foundation and a lot of people ask me, well, aren't you supposed to apply sunscreen every two hours? How do you do that when you have makeup on? So the every two hours recommendation is based on the FDA's testing with two hours of constant direct sun exposure. So after two hours of constant direct sun exposure, most sunscreens have given up the ghost and will not be protecting you very much anymore. The guidelines were more intended for times where you are out in the sun continuously for hours, in which case, if you're going to the beach, if you're out exercising, then definitely reapply your sunscreen for every two hours of sun exposure. That's very important. Now, if you are just living a normal life where you're in your house most of the day or you're going to the office and you're only accumulating two hours of total sun exposure for the entire day, then you could put on your quarter teaspoon in the morning and you should be basically fine for the rest of the day with maybe a little touch up later in the afternoon. But if you have on makeup, putting on another quarter teaspoon of sunscreen is generally going to mess up your makeup. So I always recommend the mineral sunscreen powders. This is the one from Color Science. This is an SPF 50. This is my favorite. It is fairly expensive though. It's a tinted mineral powder and it comes with a brush in the cap. So you just swirl it over your makeup. If your makeup has gotten shinier or anything, this will also mattify it. So it's a really great product. You can just keep that in your handbag and just reapply later in the day. Another one that I like is the Derma E Essentials SPF 30. Also a tinted powder, very similar product also has a brush in the cap. You just brush that on over your face. These are great for using in your hairline. If you are gonna be at the beach and you tend to get burned in your scalp, those are terrific for that. So that's a great way to reapply. I'm not a huge fan of the spray-on sunscreens because it's not a great idea to inhale like titanium dioxide, for example, which is in most mineral sunscreens. Also with spray-on sunscreens, they always recommend that you spray it and then rub it. So if you're spraying it, and not rubbing it, you're not gonna be getting great uh, coverage with it. Another couple of products that can be good for reapplying your sunscreen later in the day are stick products. This is a new one by Elta MD. It's their UV stick. This is an SPF 50 plus. It's just a nice big stick. You can keep that in your bag or in your car. This one does go on with a little bit of a white cast, but it's not too bad and you wouldn't necessarily have to rub it. Let's say you're gonna be outside. You could just hit the high points of your face, maybe your nose, your eyebrows, your cheekbones, your chin, and then you could get some reasonable coverage if you really were caught out without sunscreen. And then another one is by Color Science. This is their Sun Forgettable Total Protection Color Balm SPF 50. You can use this for your lips. 
and you can use this for your cheeks. It'll act like a blush. Of course, you're not gonna be able to put this like all over your entire face. Protecting your lips from the sun is also really important. But in general, my recommendation if you're gonna be out in the sun is to just bring a hat with you. Sunscreen is a tool that we have, but it's not foolproof. So that's why they always tell you to wear a hat, wear protective clothing, seek the shade. So that is it for this year's sunscreen testing video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, go ahead and give the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.